Hello everybody, it's Jamie from Old Shipping Lines and welcome back again to Ship Story Video. Today we're going to talk about the story of the SS Cap Polonio, one of my uh, favorite German ships. It is something about them that, uh, that interests me, about the design. So I thought I would share, uh, like I said then, one uh, the story of the uh, Cap Polonio. So uh, without ever ado guys, let's begin. So let's first start with a building. The Cap Polonio was owned by the ship owners, the Hamburg South America Line. She had the sister ship called the SS Cap Trafalgar, who would later, who would sadly be sunk by the Cunarder, the RMS Carmania. The Cap Polonio would have been built by the shipbuilders Blom and Voss in Hamburg, Germany. The Cap Polonio would have been launched on 8 February 1914. But later, when the fitting out would begin, the First World War began. And at the end of July, Nord of July 1914, Cap Polonio was not yet complete. With the prior agreement of the owners, the Imperial, Na the Imperial German Navy requisitioned her for conversion to an auxiliary cruiser. She was completed and armed with four 500mm 5.9 and four 88mm 3.5 in quick firing guns. She was designed with three funnels, but the third one, the third one aft was a dummy. For war service, the Imperial Navy had the dummy funnel removed. In February 1915, this work was completed, and on 6 February 1915, she was commissioned as the SMS Vinetta. Now we move uh, on to her service in World War I. Vinetta's sea trials were unsatisfactory. Although the combination of piston engines and a turbine, and a turbine had achieved unrevealed fuel economy and good speeds in several uk built liners, Vinetta failed to reach her designed top speed of 17 knots and her coal consumption was a prodigious 250 tons per day. This gave her a maximum endurance at sea of less than three weeks. Also, by this time, the first phase of the war on commons was over. Giving her shortcomings, the Imperial Navy decommissioned Vinetta and returned her to her owners. Restored to her civilian name Capolonio, she remained in Hamburg, trapped by the Allied blockade of Germany. Now we move on to the third part of the story, her English owners. After, 1918, arm, after the 1918 armistice, the United States seized her as war representations. But she was then transferred to the UK shipping controller in London, who placed her under Union Castle Line management. She sailed to England, was painted in Union Castle colors and embarked passengers and homewards bound South African soldiers for a voyage to Cape Town and Durban. Capolonio sailed from Plymouth in Devon on 21 June 1919. Despite being bunkered with good British steam coal, she meant only 12 knots. Thus, she suffered a series of mechanical failures. <laughs> she did not reach Cape Town until 18 July and the Durban leg of her voyage was cancelled. On return to Plymouth, the ship remained for a time in Denvon Port Dockyard. Next, the ship came under P&O management, who sailed her to Bombay in India. On this voyage, she achieved only 10 knots and again suffered significant mechanical problems. P&O too gave up on her and she spent the time out of service in Liverpool. Now we talk about the part that she was back in uh, on the German service. And finally, in 1921, Cap Polonio's original owners, Hamburg Sud, bought the Cap Polonio back. In February 1922, she finally began the Hamburg Buenos Aires service for which she had been built eight years earlier. And she at least achieved the 18 to 19 knots speeds for which she was designed. In, 19, 
1927, Blom and Vos completed a new flagship for the Hamburg, South, Hamburg Sud fleet. And with a 20 knot top speed, the new Caparcona was significantly larger and slightly quicker than the Cap Polonio. The older ship remained in regular service until 1931, when Hamburg Sud let her up. Laid her up, sorry, laid her up. In June 1935, Capolonio sailed to Bremenhaven, where she was scrapped. But luckily for us, when the Capolonio interiors uh, were also scrapped, some uh, pieces of the interior uh, was uh, kept and is now in the interior of the Capolonio Hotel in uh, Pinnenberg, Germany. So that's a good thing, I guess, that... We st that the people who sleep there or spend the night there, they get st they could still feel uh, a part or still see a part of that uh, magnificent line and that was the Capolonio. And that was the end of the video again. Sorry if you had to wait a little longer for uh, that I made you wait for a new video. I had uh, tremendous uh, work last uh, days. But uh, my personal thoughts on the Capolonio story is that she had a hard life. I mean, if we uh, go, if if you listen to the part with uh, her speed or her engines, that uh, the English threw actually threw her away, P&O threw her away just because the speed and the engines. They could have worked on the engines, but hey ho, nothing can me be more done. Um, but life was hard for her, and I think if if she would if those engine problems would have been fixed, um, she would have had a much more uh, easier life. But uh, like I said, she's one of my favorite German liners, so I always keep a special place for her in my heart. Uh, so that then again is the end of the video guys uh, as always we will have a good day or night wherever you are and we will see each other on the next one uh, bye bye